Hello everyone. This is that Mad85, TM85 for short. And uh I gave you my intro today, which I'm I like. I'm proud I made it. Uh didn't really add it last time, but yeah, I didn't add it last time. It's cuz uh I didn't think about it to be honest, but takes a little bit of prep to make sure that's work. Oh right, let me give us some music too. I also forgot that last time. I got a little music to listen to as we go through the podcast here. Let me make sure I have that set up right too. Yes. Okay. So forgive me for these uh, little hiccups as we started, but now that we have started, welcome to the uh, streamcast here. I am Matt from That Mad 85, TM85, and I'm here for Technology Talk. Uh, we had a good show yesterday, and we have an even better show today. Today, we will be talking about what computer should you get. That being the case, actually, let me update our uh, broadcast here really quick. <laughs> mm, I'll get used to this once I do it a bit more. Uh, so, what computer? Should you get? So yes, this is a discussion on. Hey, hey there, John Bear. You are hardcore. <laughs> I I saw that video that you uh showed me. It's a uh, Mick Foley's a genius, but we'll talk more about Mick Foley and other WWE stuff uh, on tomorrow's podcast, our streamcast, <clears throat> with my partner John Bear. Anyways, though. So yeah, today is what computer should you get? And this is uh, a really quick guide to if right now you're thinking about, hey, maybe I need to update my computer. Maybe I just want a new computer. Maybe I'm getting these uh, uh, stimulus checks and I want to spend it on something. There's a lot of things to think about. Uh, I feel that a lot of times, you know, if you're unsure, you probably go with... Uh, something that you know for sure is going to work usually overpay uh, maybe not even get exactly what you're looking for for what you need and maybe you're not even sure what you need but that's kind of the, some of the stuff that we're going to be talking about a lot of comparisons here and again just an overview nothing too specific um, we will get to specifics in later episodes so uh, we can talk uh, down and dirty specific parts exactly what you're looking for and of course, if anybody listening has any uh, specific questions that they want, feel free to ask in the uh, stream chat. Feel free to leave a comment on the YouTube channel. Feel free to leave a comment on my Twitter, that ma at ThatMad85. Uh, or I guess send me an email through Gmail, ThatMad85 at gmail.com. Lots of ways to get a hold of me. But that creates a lot of content that we can keep uh, having episodes about. So, what computer should you get? First thing I want to look at is desktop versus laptop. Uh, I think the first thing that comes to mind for a lot of people is a laptop. It's just a little more convenient, more of what everybody has. It's smaller, lightweight, more portable, a lot more you can do with it. Uh, if you have a studio set up for streaming or uh, other, I guess an office maybe, you might have a desktop. Um, so what are the pros and cons of desktops and laptops? So first thing that comes to my mind is durability. If you have a laptop, chances are you're not just leaving it in one place all the time for its whole life. You're probably taking it with you on vacation, taking it with you uh, around the house, taking it with you at a friend's house. Uh, it's made to be mobile, that's the point of it. And for the longest time, they were restricted because of their size. You can only have uh, so much power in there. But nowadays, you can get a laptop. Again, not as powerful as the most powerful desktops, but beyond what most people will ever need. Uh, so if you're, if you're worried about, you know, I need this much power, laptops should be able to cover you. However, like I was saying with durability, because you're moving it around so much, it's more likely to get scuffed up, more likely to get uh, dinged up, more likely to get broke. And it doesn't matter how careful you are, 
doesn't matter if you have your special carrying case. It's probably going to happen. Um, by comparison, for myself, I just have ridiculous amounts of computers and I've worked with ridiculous amounts of computers. Uh, laptops usually last me about a year before it has some sort of uh, major ding that's just annoying the heck out of me. Uh, whereas my desktop I've had since I graduated high school. Granted, I've upgraded my desktop bit by bit over and over, but I've never really had anything that's broken on it. Uh, and I guess that kind of makes sense for the most part, it just sits there. I might every once in a while change the room that it's sitting in. I might every once in a while change the house that I'm living in, transport it around like that. And back in the day, if you're doing a LAN party, you probably brought a gigantic desktop with you to your friend's house for the LAN party. Uh, again, I wouldn't suggest that nowadays with laptops being so powerful. Uh, you might as well take a laptop with you over to a friend's house. Uh, but yes, durability wise, a desktop you're really not going to have to worry about it getting broke for the most part. Of course it depends on what you're doing with it, but for the most part because they're not that portable they're not going to get dinged up that much. There's laptops, again, no matter how careful you are with it, something's going to happen. Uh, going back to my laptop, which is in the direction I was staring there, um, my current laptop is about what A year, year and a half years old, and it has uh, had a front bezel piece break off, and it broke off because the battery expanded, um, kind of like you know how the Samsung uh, batteries not too long ago were blowing up. That's kind of what was happening to my battery. It expanded, it never blew up, and it was kind of working, but it didn't fit in there anymore. So, and it's dangerous of course, so I took it out and replaced it with a different battery, but that bezel piece is it's ruined. <laughs> it can't go back, so it's just missing, it doesn't look nice. Um, it still works fine now, but, you know, you don't want your computer that you're using to look like a piece of junk. The computer I had before that also got uh, dinged up a bit, just even from closing and opening the lid, the hinge is worn and all the pieces of wire that went through there got worn uh, and bent up to where it was having problems with the screen. Um, there's just little things like that that happen that you can't really fix um, or it's really not worth fixing if you can. And that's the kind of thing that just happens with laptops. So something to think about. Of course you get the portability. I'm not saying that it's all downhill laptops mostly you want for portability and if you want portability that's what you need uh, but as far as durability goes chances are your laptop's gonna break at some point and force you to buy a new laptop uh, upgradability is another downside for laptops a lot of times because it's so carpet compartmentalized because it's uh, not really set to any sort of standards once you buy your laptop, you're good. You might be able to swap in a bigger hard drive. You might be able to swap in a little bit more memory. And that's usually assuming that um, you bought a lower version of the laptop model that you're buying. And it has room for you to upgrade it yourself. Meaning that most of the time you could buy it with those upgrades in it already. Uh, and not have to upgrade it yourself. A lot of times you might buy a laptop and there is no upgradeability. Um, as far as desktops go, of course, it's it's made to expand. You're going to be able to expand it as much as you want. You're going to constantly be able to buy new parts, swap in new parts, one by one or all of that at the same time if you want. Um, your computer just keeps evolving and getting be uh, better better, newer and newer without you having to buy a new model. And that goes especially for custom built computers, but a lot of times even if you buy store, store model computers, you can get in there and uh, expand your computer if you want to. 
Uh, so again, that's another downside for laptops is what you buy is what you got until you don't want it anymore and you need to up update. So as far as power goes, if you're wanting a computer with a lot of power, desktops of course are going to have the latest and greatest and best parts that you can buy to give you the most power that you need. Uh, graphics processing power, just processing power, bunch of sticks of RAM, whatever you're looking for, you can shove it in there. And if it doesn't have room for it, you can buy a new motherboard that does. Again, uh, with laptops, you're limited to what you buy. But again, to be honest, like my laptop is built for virtual reality gaming. I can have my laptop with no power plug in my headset and all my sensors and do virtual reality gaming which is going to push my graphics card to the max. Uh, pretty much that's about as powerful as it gets for most uses. If you want uh, some hardcore you know, server or hardcore uh, video processing uh, capabilities then it's going to be a lot harder to find all that in a laptop. But for nearly anybody a uh, laptop's going to be able to cover you in power if you want it. Uh, and the other discussion point I can think of right now for laptop versus desktop is the price. Now, laptops generally are going to cost more for the same thing because they're put together by the factory, by the company uh, that produces it. Um, you can't really buy a custom, a true custom built laptop. You can just customize your laptop, but because it's being built, uh, because you don't have a choice, they're going to be able to have the cost be higher, especially if you, especially if you want cutting edge. A lot of times they'll make so many laptops, not sell them all, and after a year or two, you might be able to find it on clearance for a decent price. But at that point in time, that a process uh, laptop with those specs will cost less anyways even if you buy a new one, not a used one, or an old uh, model. But yeah, as far as price goes, again, everything, not just because it's being built by the company, but uh, because you're buying smaller versions of everything that's in there. Like again, for example, my laptop has a uh, GT 1080 video card because it's what the minimum specs are needed for virtual reality gaming. In a desktop, the regular size of the card is kind of like this, pretty big. You can't fit that in a laptop, so they have to make a laptop model of it that's a lot smaller. They still need to be able to vent all the heating in, um, through air and through cooling to make sure it doesn't overheat itself. you got to fit battery in there that's going to make it work. Uh, all the parts that you're putting in there are tiny, custom made, not built to standard, so you're going to have uh, that kind of workmanship is basically going to raise the price over the same things put in your desktop. That's not necessarily true. Sometimes there are desktop companies, are companies that build desktops that, uh, based on their name and prestige, may charge more. Uh, when they're not really giving you a whole lot more. But just as a general rule, again, you're going to pay more for the same thing in a laptop than you would in a desktop. So really what it comes down for me is portability. If you're needing to take your laptop around and you need that laptop to be very powerful, then you're going to have to go and pay what you need to pay and get what you need to get in your laptop. But if you can handle it being stationary, for 99% of its lifetime. Uh, desktop's really the way to go for so many different reasons. Um, I mean, a really good idea is to get a desktop for your power and performance that you're probably gonna need in the same spot all the time. Get a laptop that's cheaper and still does a whole lot. Even, and then we'll go over this later, but even like a Chromebook. Uh, you can get a Chromebook with an HD screen, uh, decent specs, for honestly $150, $200, you might even be able to go a little cheaper and still find something nice. You can have that for traveling for, uh, I guess, yeah, for stuff that isn't games. And again, we'll get to this later, but uh, even if you want a cheaper Microsoft laptop, you can find it for two, 
three, four hundred dollars maybe at most, but a decent uh, working for some games, for some uh, ability to take with you, not have to worry about it as much, not be able to put it through the rigors of processing that much with uh, high-end games or anything like that. And it's not that expensive. And then meanwhile, you can invest the money that you really need to invest on a desktop that's going to last you for as long as you uh, keep upgrading it. So, next topic, as far as what kind of computer you should get, is Mac versus Windows versus Chrome operating system versus Linux. So, those are the major operating systems and it's kind of funny how it's changed especially with Chrome operating system being big enough to be considered its own operating system sorry I'm having uh, allergy problems uh, but yes so we have Mac with Apple Windows with Microsoft Chrome OS being put out by Google and Linux uh, which you would find online and install yourself um, I don't know, I, I imagine some places sell computers with Linux installed, but uh, it used to be a little more prevalent not too long ago, five, ten years ago, you could buy laptops, desktops that were pretty cheap. I think nowadays if somebody's going to go with Linux or a producer of uh, computers is going to put Linux on their computer to make it cheap, they'd rather just go with Chrome OS and make it a Chromebook. Anyways things to consider with uh, the different types of operating systems we have price so Linux as an operating system again you'd buy the computer this I mean if you really wanted Linux for other reasons you'd buy a computer probably a Windows computer and put Linux on it uh, or buy a used computer and put Linux on it because uh, whoever sold you the computer doesn't have the operating system disk or product key anymore or it's got an old uh, operating system that you don't want to use anymore. Linux is compatible, as far as I've seen with most Windows computers, you would just install it, or you can even dual boot it. You can have Windows or Linux, and you choose which one you want to boot into when you start your computer up. Um, Linux, again, is free. With some exceptions, you could buy paid versions of Linux, uh, but what you're really paying for is support and stuff. And that's more for businesses, not necessarily for uh, home users. Um, Chrome OS, likewise, is free. Uh, you can find Chrome OS on Chromebooks, and a lot of times you need it to be. Well, you know, I haven't really tried it out. Maybe you could find Chrome OS uh, has, maybe Chrome OS has generic drivers that allow you to put it on Windows computers or computers that aren't designed for it. Uh, but a lot of times that's why you can't put operating systems on uh, computers meant for other operating systems is because drivers are needed for all the components to work. If you don't have the driver, it's either going to work really slow or it's not going to work at all. So a lot of times if you buy a Chromebook, you're not going to be able to upgrade it to Windows. You might be able to uh, still install Linux on it, because Linux does a good job of gen using generic drivers and getting the most out of them. <clears throat> but a lot of times if you're getting a Chromebook, you're going to buy a Chromebook and it's going to have Chrome OS on it. So Chrome OS is like if your entire operating system was Google Chrome, the web page. Uh, and that sounds incredibly limited. I mean, think about your current computer. If the only application you had was Google Chrome, I'm sure most of you think, you know, I play games, I uh, stream, I have all these applications I use for different reasons. There's no way I could get away with just using Chrome uh, web browser as my basis of all operations on my computer. But really, if you think about it, let's say you need to write letters, word processing, processing. you have uh, Google Docs. Heck, even Windows has online uh, Word nowadays. Let's say you need to stream. Uh, there's probably online based streaming applications. Uh, and basically what I'm trying to get at here is tons and tons of applications. If they're not already on there, they're migrating to the web uh, for cloud computing where a server somewhere else hosts all the applications 
you just dial into there using your web browser like Chrome and operate through the web browser to do whatever you want to do. Um, this doesn't work for everything, like for example, uh, a lot of video games, you install that to your computer uh, and you use it from your computer, you're not going to be able to... What's a good example? Let's say I'm wanting to play Half-Life 2 like I am now. I don't think you can play it on Half-Life 2 or on uh, Chrome OS because there, there would have to be a Chrome extension or application that would let you use it and I don't think there is. Uh, Steam, I, again, I don't believe is a cloud, well, I don't think Steam is available through Chrome OS or something like that. You'd have to install it to your computer. Um, so Chrome OS is limited, what you would be using it for. I mean, it's limited, but it's not as limited as you would think. It just means you have to do a lot of cloud computing, which means a lot of trusting your information and your data to other companies, which just depends on how much you do trust uh, other companies with your data and how much you mind them having it. The uh, assumption that they are probably going to be able to see it and use it for this or that. So then we have Windows. Windows, of course, uh, the prominent operating system since it came out with DOS. Uh, Windows, of course, has a price, but normally if you buy a computer, it's built in. It, it, it's not a cost so much that you would uh, factor in. You're buying your computer and Windows is built in. You don't really need to buy a copy of Windows yourself, although you could for a hundred-ish bucks. But it is, uh, I guess, as far as price goes, yeah, again, you don't really consider it, but if you need to buy it, you can buy it for about a hundred bucks. Uh, as far as pricing goes, if we look at Mac, Mac, uh, again, I guess Mac is free. And here's the reason why Mac is free, their operating system, because you can basically only use Mac on a Mac computer. So they don't have to worry about people pirating it because if they bought the computer, they uh, should have a license for it anyways. And all their, I guess not all their updates are free, but um, a lot of times their updates are free. So if they're worried about somebody with an older computer getting a newer operating system, they don't really need to worry about that that much. So another thing to consider with the different operating systems is compatibility. So if we look at compatibility, Chrome OS is going to be the lowest on that list. It just uses Chrome extensions and uh, cloud computing. And again, there's a lot you can do with cloud, cloud computing. There's a lot of things that aren't on the cloud or their full premium versions aren't on the cloud. And I do think that's going to change soon. Almost all applications will probably be cloud-based but at the moment that's not the case. Linux would be next on that list. Linux does have a decent amount of compatibility. There's a lot of programs that are uh, Mac, Windows, and Linux versions, but there's a lot that isn't, especially with games. Um, a lot of times with Linux versions of software, uh, you're looking for a different version that does kind of the same thing. So like well, Photoshop, I'm pretty sure, does have a Linux version, but for example, if you have Photoshop and there's not a Linux version, you'd be getting GIMP, the uh, free version of uh, open source version that is available on Linux. And there are t a ton of tools on Linux that are available for you. Um, you just have to learn how to use these versions of the tools. Generally, a lot of software is free on Linux. Not everything, though. Uh, there is, for games, there is Steam on Linux. You would uh, just download Steam and then hope that your game that you want to play has a Linux version, which may or may not exist. But Steam lets you know, and you can even sort it out by the games that are available to play on Steam, uh, on Linux. Otherwise, it'll just work with your computer, it's like any other kind of computer works with. You can get into a lot of stuff in Linux and really customize it and change it around 
pretty neat even if you just want to play around with it. You might seem a little lost at first, but if you enjoy looking up tutorials and finding out how to solve problems, uh, Linux will let you do a lot. And even if you don't, it's set up to be pretty easy nowadays to be able to use. You can have a Windows-like desktop or you can have an Apple-like desktop. Uh, because speaking of Apple, Apple is a version of Linux, technically. Um, and with Apple, Apple again, very compatible with a lot of things. A lot of people, a lot of uh, producers of software and games, if they're going to release a version, release a Mac version too. Not everybody, of course. Uh, but Mac has a lot of compatibility with uh, useful tools and games. And then, of course, Windows is pretty much the standard that everything is compatible for because it has the biggest user base. Everybody pretty much wants to write code for Windows and then hopefully port it over to other systems like Apple. So if you're looking for compatibility, making sure that the computer you buy will be able to use whatever software you want, Windows is uh, the king of that. As far as usefulness, um, I've kind of gone over this a few times with the different ones, but uh, Chrome OS is very useful for uh, if you're not going to be gaming, if you're not going to be doing a lot of uh, powerful stuff, uh, if you want to just use a lot of cloud software, uh, then Chrome is perfectly fine with doing all of that. Linux has a lot of programs, usually kind of like uh, generic programs instead of the name brand programs, but even a lot of the biggest name programs are useful on Linux. Uh, Mac has a few limitations as far as stuff that is made for Windows but doesn't end up getting released for Mac. And then of course, Windows will let you do whatever you need to do. So it, it really comes down to preference and what you're needing it for. Um, so if you're needing, if everything you need to do can be done on Linux and you like using Linux, then chances are you're going to go, go with Linux. If you're using a lot of online stuff, you're not doing a lot of powerful stuff, not a lot of offline gaming, then Chrome OS is a cheaper and sleeker product. Uh, if you're a big Mac fan and you don't need anything that isn't on Mac, uh, chances are you're going with Mac. And if you just want to make sure you're able to do everything you need to do, Windows is probably what you're going for. Uh, there's no wrong answer, of course. It comes down to a lot of preference and uh, what works for you, what you're prioritizing. Uh, my suggestion is really you can't go wrong with Windows. And uh, if you're not a big power user, if you're wanting to stay offline, Chrome OS uh, makes a good product that is very cheap. So, what are you going to be using your computer for? If you're doing some hardcore gaming, like uh, virtual reality, that's going to push your graphics card to the max. If you're doing a computer like that, you can um, really need to prioritize your graphics processor. It needs to be at a certain level or it's not even going to play virtual reality games. And that's what you're going to be spending most of your money on is the processor. Um, you can build your own computer by just the processor or you can uh, buy a package deal with that processor in it. That's not as big of a deal, but uh, yes, for hardcore gaming, you're going to look at mostly the uh, graphics processing unit, the GPU. Um, for regular gaming, you don't have to worry as much about having a high-end card, but you can have one of the mid-range cards, a lot, lot less expensive. Uh, you can look at having... You know what? Let's go through this really quick. Is that, yeah, hardcore gaming is kind of one category. Regular gaming is another category. Streaming has a few uh, quirks to it. There's casual use for, like I was saying with uh, Chrome OS, where you're not pushing it too hard. You don't need to spend a ton of money on it. Uh, you might be doing video production. I know a lot of us are streamers. I'm glad you use GIMP, uh, John. A lot of people can't get used to it because they like Photoshop, they're taught Photoshop, and then they can't really switch over. It takes a little getting used to, but especially if you start out with GIMP, you know how to use it. It's really not that different. 
uh, and is free. So GIMP is something I would uh, recommend myself. But yeah, but if you're doing a lot of video production, if you have huge uh, video files and a lot of editing that you need to do, it takes time. So you might gear your computer around being able to uh, edit videos with a lot of processing power. So yeah, if you're a hardcore gamer, you're wanting to look at big expensive graphic graphics processing unit. If you're a regular gamer, you need a good graphics processing unit, a GPU, video card. But uh, you don't have to worry about it as much. If you're streaming, uh, again, that's kind of in the range of uh, regular gaming. You want to look at your graphics card. Uh, you want to make sure that you have a good connection to the internet uh, with your network. If you're a casual use, you don't need to worry about a whole lot of that. I just look at it being inexpensive, having a good uh, monitor for you to, or screen for you to watch videos on. Uh, a lot of screen space might be nice. Uh, and with video production, there's uh, certain processors and GPUs that you're really going to want to focus on. So, breaking it down into parts, when you're getting a computer and you're looking at hard drives, uh, there's the old platter hard drives. It goes up to like 4 terabytes now, and it's really inexpensive to get a lot of uh, disk space on these platters. There's also uh, solid state drives, SSDs, that are a lot faster because it can access the memory directly instead of having to spin, spin the platters and have the head find the data. Um, so if they're a bit more expensive though, so a lot of times it's good to have both the uh, big hard drive to put a lot of data on that you don't need really fast and the solid state drive to put like your operating system on, maybe a couple of games. Uh, depends what you use your computer for. Uh, there's even solid state drives that, uh, let me show you an example, they come on little chips like this. This is a RAM stick so it's not exactly the same thing, but they come on chips shaped roughly like this and you put it into a slot like this. It's a lot, lot faster than even the other uh, types of solid state drives and of course costs more. Um, and you might be being sold by whoever's selling you the computer and you need all this uh, newer technology for solid state drives. Uh, it really just depends on what you're doing. Even if you're just playing a lot of games, it doesn't take that long to load up your games. You might at most cut your loading time for, for a really big game from like two minutes to one minute maybe. Uh, but you're hardly going to notice the difference. Loading the operating system, I've noticed, has been a lot faster. Windows, instead of taking like five minutes to start up, was more like a minute or two. It's just super fast like that, which is really nice. But for a lot of things I'm doing, I'm not noticing how long it's taken me to get it done. Uh, so with hard drives, I'd go for at least one big, slower, regular hard drive and maybe a smaller uh, solid-state drive. Uh, so like for a four terabyte uh, big hard drive and really one terabyte for a lot of people is going to be all you need But even if you want to go max like four terabyte might be a hundred bucks a hundred fifty bucks whereas like I'd say If you wanted to go like 250 gigs for a solid-state drive That'd also be about a hundred bucks. It's a lot less space though so uh when you're looking at a motherboard, if you're doing a custom uh, computer, when you're looking at a motherboard, you kind of want to see what's on that motherboard. What kind of? A lot of times, you're going to pick out your processor first, and you're going to get a motherboard that's compatible with the processor. But there's a lot of motherboards that are compatible with the same type of processors. You want to look what kind of expansion bays are there? Is it PCI, PCI Express, PCI Express uh, mini slots? Uh, is there HDMI or video built in? Is there a sound card built in? Um, how many USBs are there in there? Uh, is there some on the... Well, I guess you don't really... You'd look at uh, how much cache. Uh, cache is like really fast RAM that'll um, help your computer run a lot faster. 
those are all things that you're going to consider when you're looking at a motherboard and a lot of times the more you pay the more you're going to get out of it um, so find something that suits you um, it's better than any sort of like specific standard so as far as processor goes uh, it's two main companies for processors Intel and AMD they both have their fans I think most people if they don't know the difference go with Intel Intel generally has better processors uh, AMD has cheaper processors that still do a good job it just depends uh, how much power you need a lot of times you can compare the different types of processors online um, there'll be comparison charts for like uh, just how good they are going up the list uh, when I picked my computer out last time I upgraded the processor I just went at the top of the list what's the best processor and stepped my way down until I got to a processor that was cost in my uh, budget range so I was like four or five processors down from the top of the list which really isn't bad it's very good fast new processor granted this was three four or five years ago since I've updated my processor uh, but even if you go that far down the list the price drops a lot so I got my processor for like a hundred hundred fifty bucks <laughs> um, I've had AMD processors that are just fine. It just depends, again, how much uh, power you want versus cost. Um, so with AMD, I forget exactly how they name their different lines of processors, but uh, as far as Intel goes, they ha they're kind of doing their I processors, or they might even call it the core I processors. So they have I3, I5, I7, and now they kind of have I9 processors. As you go up the list there, they become more and more powerful. i7 was kind of the standard that I'd wanted for a good processor for what I'm doing as far as uh, kind of pushing my computer for gaming and pushing my computer as far as being able to st uh, stream and process data for editing and all that stuff. Um, if you're seeing a core in front of it, that usually means it's a uh, secondary uh, cheaper version of the same processor uh, but a lot of times it has a bit more limitations to it too so if you're really wanting to go with a processor that's going to get stuff done look towards the i7s stay away from the cores uh, if you're looking to save more money you might put those in for the money saving uh, a core i5 or a core i3 uh, for the money saving for the power saving uh, to be more equal eco-friendly and uh, so also looking at RAM uh, the type of RAM you get is going to be determined by the motherboard you have and you should be able to know what type of RAM you have uh, but when you're picking out how much RAM you need I'd say nowadays 4 gigs is kind of the minimum what you start with 8 gigs is kind of more normal and should cover, cover everything you do if you want to keep putting in more and more RAM, that's fine. Uh, RAM you need for when you have a lot of things going at once. If you're doing video processing, RAM does help out for sure. Uh, if you're doing gaming, generally you're going to be limited unless you're doing like World of Warcraft and you're going to have 10 windows open at once. Then you need uh, enough RAM for each of those windows. So you add more in there, but if you're just playing one game at a time, even if they're more powerful games, a lot of times um, the eight gigs is going to cover it for sure. So if you're paying for more than eight gigs, you either need a good reason, or you're kind of uh, paying for something that you're not going to be using. As far as video cards go, uh, there are Nvidia video cards and ATI video cards. I've had both. I switch back and forth, and when I get newer ones, I don't really have much of a preference. Um, It's just a matter if it's going to do what you want to do. Both my video cards right now, my laptop and my desktop, are powerful enough to do uh, VR gaming. And by extension, powerful enough to do anything else that I wanted to do. So I would have to do a more specific video on video cards later to kind of give a good idea of, hey, look at this model or look at that model. but. Uh, 
there is a line in the sand if you want to do VR gaming you gotta have a 1080 Ti or higher uh, you want to look at your VR headset and see what its recommendations are and meet that or go higher and if you're not wanting to do VR you can go lower Again, we'd have to get into specific models, so I'd want to save that for later for a specific uh, video for graphics cards we can go over later. Hi there, Frog Tape. Good to see you in the chat. Uh, yeah, 1070, see, a 1080 used to be uh, the minimum specs when I got my Oculus. That was right when it first came out. But um, I think Oculus has dropped their um, necessary, their limit basically, and. Uh, the uh, other VR gaming headsets have uh, gone down to 1070s also. Um, so, I mean, it's nice now, but when I got my computers, uh, when I got my uh, Oculus, I had to try and meet that threshold. And that was at the same time that a lot of people were buying graphics cards to mine for Bitcoins. So they were hard to, not only hard to find, but more expensive than they really should have been. Uh, I mean, looking back on it, I paid a lot more for virtual reality than I should have just because I was an early adapter, but uh, yeah, thankfully nowadays you can go down to 1070. It's a lot less cheaper at that uh, price, at that range than it was when I was uh, uh, buying my graphics card. So my last uh, subject here is custom versus star store-bought. Do you want a custom-made computer? or a store-bought computer. I know a lot of times, especially for a geek like me, you're going to want to build your own computer. But I'm also here to say that it's not necessary, especially nowadays. So, one thing to consider, are you going high-end, mid-range, mid or cheap for your computer? If you're going high-end, a lot of times, if you're buying a store-bought computer, they're going to upcharge you a lot. It ends up being cheaper a lot of times to buy, especially if you get because you get to pick out just the parts that you want and build your own computer, or have a friend or somebody that knows what they're doing build the computer for you. Um, again, you can find really nice stuff in newer computers, and you have to go for high rate, high end uh, brands, but they will upcharge you a lot because you, they know you don't have a whole lot of options. As far as mid-range goes, you can kind of go either way. Uh, Store-bought mid-range computers can vary from being really expensive overpriced to being uh, about moderately priced about what you should pay if you were customizing it yourself. Of course, again, the, the benefit of customizing is that you get to pick what you want on your computer, how much you want of it, uh, and leave off anything that you don't want. Um, and if you go with cheap computers, unless you're going to try and salvage parts for super duper cheap a lot of times it's a lot easier a lot better and even a lot cheaper to buy a store-bought computer just a Dell computer, a Lenovo computer, Acer there's a lot of uh, I guess cheaper brands uh, and you can get them for cheaper than honestly than what you could for uh, building it yourself uh, so as far as price goes Again, I talked about this before, but if you're buying a high-end computer, a lot of times it's cheaper to build it yourself. If you're bu building a mid-range computer, it's about the same either way. If you're going for a cheaper computer, a lot of times it's cheaper to buy it store-bought than it is to build your own computer. It's kind of surprising to hear that, but it's true. Uh, but the use al it also depends on uh, your use. So. If you're doing a lot of power work, again, uh, hardcore gaming, uh, video production, you're going to need a custom computer so that it can handle what you're wanting to do with it. Um, if you're doing just regular gaming, you can find something in the mid-range that's good for you. If you're wanting to just browse the internet, watch videos, watch Netflix, uh, do some cloud computing, uh, that's also fine to do. Uh, uh, store-bought computers uh, to use store-bought computers to do and the last thing to really consider with uh, custom versus store-bought is uh, warranty now you kinda get a warranty with a lot of your parts for custom computers but uh, as far as store-bought computers the warranty covers a lot more and is a lot easier to deal with I've had times where I've had a 
computer just completely break break down and flake out and uh, a good warranty a lot of times you call them up maybe they want you to send the computer back sometimes they just go okay here is your uh, check to pay for the warrant that the warranty pays out for um, they might pay to have it to have you get it fixed if you can't fix your own computer a lot of they'll find a authorized uh, warranty worker who can work under you, the warranty that you bought get it fixed at no charge to you uh, warranties are very nice especially for laptops because uh, they're harder to fix because they're not non-standard uh, and they're more likely to get broke uh, either because of your fault or not because of your fault um, so if that is a, wor a worry of yours, then getting a store-bought computer a lot of times really, really helps out as far as warranty goes. Um, so what do I have? I The two computers I use most right now are my desktop, um, which I'm using to broadcast this from. It's uh, got a lot of high-end parts, or at least it was when I put them in there. I guess it's, it's really been a, a while since I've updated my computer whatsoever. But I even have, I guess the newest thing I've put in my computer is uh, the case. Uh, my old case was a bit big and getting a bit annoying, so I bought a newer case. Um, but besides that, meaningful parts, it's been four or five years since I've put anything new in here. Uh, I have a laptop that's a pretty high-end laptop. It was store-bought from MSI. Um, and it is because I wanted to at the time I was wanting to do some virtual reality and I needed space to do it but I also wanted to take it to uh, demonstrate different virtual reality games so I needed to be able to port it and I definitely wasn't going to take my gigantic oversized desktop setup um, and it's worked out fine for what it is uh, I like being able to have the portability and have a, a power station that I can work at too uh, I also have a lot of minor computers that I've been working on myself just for fun, older computers. I've got a Windows XP build, I've got a Windows 98 build, and I've got an old DOS computer. Uh, all cost custom stuff, but that's kind of just more for my amusement than it is for uh, purpose. Uh, what I would suggest, if you don't know anybody that can help you build computers and you can't build them yourself, really going store-bought is what you need to do. Um, if you really want to do some high-end stuff and you don't want to overpay, I would look at buying a mid-range computer that has a lot of stuff that you're looking for, but maybe doesn't have the graphics processor, and then buy that processor separate. And it might seem like a big deal, but getting inside a computer to put in just a uh, graphics card, it's not that hard. It literally is just taking the side off it, sliding it to the side, plugging it into the expansion port where it obviously lines up and fits, and then plugging in a power adapter that is part of the power supply inside your uh, computer. And chances are everything is going to fit and work as is. Uh, the one thing you would have to worry about is maybe if it doesn't have enough power cords to power your uh, processor or graphics processor. Um, but otherwise, <laughs> just plug it in. <laughs> yeah, you know, I feel like as a, as a tech pro, I don't want to give away the secrets of the business, but a lot of times it is just as easy as plugging it in and you're good to go. Uh, we used to have several things at work where we'd be like, uh, customers, please stay here. Wait a minute. We go into the back. We do something really, really easy, like just plugging it in. We'll come back and be like, we fixed it for you. And because they don't see it, they don't know what, uh, they don't know what's happening. They think, oh man, they must have had these tools that did this and that. Well, no, really, we just plugged it in and it started working. So, uh, yes, a lot of times it really is easy enough just to plug it in. The only downside that, you know, would scare you rightfully is if you mess up somehow so bad that it just ruins your computer and it can happen but a lot of times especially with newer computers they're made to be so that they don't uh, they're not that fragile but yeah so if you can custom building your computer just makes a whole lot of sense unless you're wanting to go really low end 
Uh, like my wife wanted a computer just to browse the internet, look at email, watch Netflix. So we got her a Chromebook, 150 bucks with an HD screen, works very nice. And that's a lot better than trying to put together an old uh, computer out of spare parts and try and match the price. So it really depends. And again, we'll go over uh, more specifics later videos, but as a general overview of uh, getting a new computer, I hope this helps you, guides you, at least helps you think of what do I need, what do I want to look at, how do I want to get this done. Uh, and hopefully you just had fun listening and talking and discussing uh, custom computer builds. That's kind of what I'm here for. So again, if you're enjoying this, uh, find my YouTube channel, that Mad85. Find my Twitch, that Mad85. Give me some follows. Uh, follow me on here, uh, and uh, pay attention to my Twitter account for upcoming schedules for pod, uh, podcasts, live streams, uh, video uploads. I will be back tomorrow doing uh, the Bear side of the mat with uh, John Bear, our uh, wrestling podcast. Uh, we'll be going over the Double or Nothing pay-per-view that happened Saturday for AEW. It was a lot of fun, and if you're into wrestling, that is something that you should uh, tune into. It'll be tomorrow at 8 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. No, I got that wrong. It's going to be 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Central, I believe. Uh basically right before the Wednesday night shows come on and we do a little preview of the Wednesday night shows before they come on I'm also working on a movie review podcast with another friend Pat and um, I'll let you know more about that once we got it thanks for tuning in everybody and I hope to see you again